Carrie, you're showing us this great page of resources for us to share with our clients. And every one of these things we go through, she's going to add some, add some uh, more resources to on the right side here, materials for us to download and use as we need. These are all uh, linkable. Didn't ask her to do it. She set it up just out of the kindness of her heart, which is very much appreciated. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about her. Terry has a, a I'm going to, this is kind of the bio we've gotten. I've edited a little bit. Uh, All has right. a passion for helping individuals grow personally and professionally. She's led global teams, mindfulness and stress management, uh, basically to enhance performance and, you know, increase human potential. She founded the stress, mindful stress management to help eliminate roadblocks to success and well-being. And uh, she's a certified stress mastery educator. And this is the one I know, and this is amazing to me because I know this program. She's a certified mindfulness-based stress reduction instructor. Uh, and I'm just so excited that she's here for the second time. And I hope you guys get a lot out of this. We're going to do this a few more times because I think that we're going to have a crazy world for a long time. And let's just, let's get the tools that will help us navigate the crazy world. Thanks, Terry, for being here. You are so welcome. And, and thanks for having me, Jonathan, and um, to your team for helping me set everything up. And um, I'm just really grateful. And I'm so in line with what you said about now more than ever. I mean, we really need to cultivate tools of groundedness and stability. Um, because, did I see something? Everything okay? Am I on mute? No, I see you're not. you talking, John. You're closed for a second. I think it's why you're doing that. Oh, okay. Well, I hope good I have. Okay, good. All right. Um, but I just, just very much in line with what you said in terms of we really need to cultivate steadiness and groundedness in these times so that we can do what we need to do to help, to take action, to survive, whatever it is your heart is taking you to. But first, we really have to connect with ourselves and find this, um, this place of solid ground. So last time I was here, um, I talked uh, about stress and stress physiology, and we did a few practices. And this time, the focus is on the body. And you, the body is a tool of perception. Um, so we'll talk about that. But as we start, I would just love to sit here um, we're gonna do, one thing we did last time was this practice of POP. And I wanna just spend a couple minutes as you settle in from wherever you're coming from, whatever madness, email, situation. Um, it's really important to like, you've come from some situation to just land right here for this next 50 minutes or so. So POP is just, you can, you can do it right now. We'll just do about three minutes and I'll walk you right through it. We pause, we observe, we proceed. Very simple mindfulness practice. So I wanna invite you as we just begin to close your eyes, if you feel comfortable closing your eyes, you can keep them open. But just allowing the body to arrive in the chair with your awareness and just consciously notice a few breaths flowing in and out of the body. Notice that you're breathing. Luckily, you've been breathing all day. But now we let our awareness rest and breath in and breath out. And we just notice any sensations in the body, tingling, warmth, tightness, coolness, hunger, pain, just notice, connect with this body, which we will do more of tonight. Allowing whatever's there to be there. And opening to what's there in the body, in your emotions. How are you feeling? And noticing thoughts. What's on your mind? Allow it all to be there because it's there anyway. <clears throat> so we're not trying to get rid of it. 
we're just saying, oh, okay, I see what's going on. I feel you. I hear you. I can connect to what's really up for me right now. And then the last piece is proceed. And with intention, we take the next step, whatever it is, whether it's joining into this group. If you do this other times, it could be uh, drinking a cup of tea, writing an email, going to exercise, needing to take a nap. But we respond given that we've taken this moment to just touch base and we can respond rather than react. And as we close this little session here, this three minute intro, um, I just want you to touch base with yourself and just see what comes up for how you're doing right now. What's in your heart? What's in your awareness about how you're doing? A word or a phrase? Just bang my knee, sorry. We'll close. I'm going to ring this lovely bell here as we close. And then if your eyes were closed, please open. And um, all right. So a little touching base and then we'll do a, a body, full body scan. But I just wanted to bring you all here, all of us. And I'd love to go around and just hear, because we're going to be meeting more, and um, one, to just get your name and where you're calling in from, and what's your word that arose for you? What's, what's up for you? And if you don't want to share, you don't have to, um, but it's, it's wonderful to hear how people, how you are, and share it with people. Um, so should I just call you? Or there's not many people. If you want to just jump in and unmute yourself. Why don't we do that? I would say my word was worry. <laughs> uh, and uh, I'm Jonathan. I'm in Berkeley. All right. Thanks, Jonathan. Mine was unrest, and I'm Paul and in Berkeley. All right. Um, mine was trauma. My name is Sarah, and I'm in Berkeley. Mm. All right. This is David Glosser in Berkeley. I actually didn't think of a word. Hmm. This is uh, Scott. Um, I'm in San Francisco. I thought the exercise was during the few minutes. What word were you, were, were you thinking? And I actually was thinking uh, quiet. quiet. Okay. All right. I think we got everybody. Or John, Matt, oh, is that John, that's you. You have two screens there. Is that right? Okay. Um, okay, wonderful. And I just, you know, um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. It's a very intense time and legitimately intense not to be denied and, um, and not to be pushed away. So we're not here to like put on a happy face and but to really settle into what's there. Can we touch it, embrace it? And, um, and the, through the practice we'll do tonight with the body scan, touch into our body to see what we're sensing and where we feel uh, perhaps stress or tightness and soften and connect to this body that has so much information for us. Um, it's, so we're establishing, re-establishing a connection with our body, um, which is what we're going to do tonight. Um, connect to the body, explore a little bit our stress lens, load and signature, which I talked about last week, last month, last time. And, um, and then apply the tools to your daily life. So the body scan is a big part of mindfulness-based stress reduction which I was trained in. So it's a big part of a lot of mindfulness practices. Like how can we connect to this body that carries us around, is amazing, breathes for us, heartbeat, oxygen flow. I mean, billions of you know, neurons and cells in the body. How can we connect to it? We're often so preoccupied by the appearance of our body, but we're not so 
preoccupied with what's really happening in the body. So um, we're kind of out of touch. And in fact, there's a, a saying that John Kabat-Zinn always talks about is a, a book. Um, oh gosh, who was it? James Joyce. Okay, James Joyce. In one of James Joyce's books, he, there's a character called Mr. Duffy. And he says about Mr. Duffy, Mr. Duffy lived quite a distance from his body. And so many of us are walking around quite a distance from our body. And our body has so much information for us. And if we are maybe, you know, connected a little bit, it might be in a critical way. Too tall, I'm too short, I'm too big, I'm too thin, I'm too blonde, I'm too whatever, I'm too bald, I'm too gray, you know, whatever it is, there's, there's this um, kind of a lack of respect sometimes for the body. So through this practice, we feel, we notice, and we connect with the body and all its sensations. Little by little, we start with the, the bottom of the feet. So realizing that this very body with its aches and its pleasures is exactly what we need to be fully human, fully alive, fully awake. So Pema Chodron, a wonderful teacher, Buddhist teacher and author. So we're gonna do a little practice. And when you think about babies, the babies are, oops, babies are so in their bodies, aren't they? They're just exploring everything, their toes into their mouths, and we're not gonna be doing that. Um, but, um, you'll be happy to know. But a lot of exploration, lots of connection. So what, the, what this practice is, is that we're gonna be doing is the body scan, and it's a luxurious practice, I would say. You are able to lie down if you want to. You can turn off your, your video camera, if you know, I have I have my yoga mat here just to kind of remind me if you want a yoga mat. I'm not going to be lying down though. Um, if you have a couch handy, if you don't have any place to lie down, just sitting in your chair is a fine way to do the body scan. So I want you to do what's comfortable. And what it entails is starting from the we scan through the whole body and just bringing your awareness from the toes to the top of the head, little by little. And um, so just being, it's a mindfulness practice, being aware of what sensations you notice. We're not trying to relax the body. We're not tightening and relaxing, tightening. That's a very different thing. We're just noticing what's here, just like you did with your word. You're noticing, you're acknowledging what's here right now. And can I have the courage even to be with it? because it does take courage to sit with some of this stuff that we're sitting with. So we're gonna do the practice. It's about 30 minutes. And um, I wanna ask if there are any questions before we start. Any questions or concerns or things you wanna clear up? Yeah. So I, I just, I, I, Many people, I think, on the on the call maybe haven't done serious meditation. Mm -hmm. So thirty minutes is aggressive. It's aggressive for the first go. So okay. if anyone, I just would say, give people permission to stand up and stretch if they have to. You know, sitting still for thirty minutes is a long time unless you've sat before and stared at a wall. It's it's a long time. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Now, if you lie down. That's easier. That's why we start in MBSR. We really do start lying down because your body really can let go and relax. So if you're comfortable, I don't see many people going to lie. Is anybody going to lie down? Yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll go maybe like 20 minutes somewhere just because for the people who are lying down. Um, but I totally hear that. That's a long time for beginners. And I'm going to walk you through every step of recognizing the from the toes of the feet up the body. So um, yeah, I like seeing the videos go off because I think that means that you're lying down. So you can take this in. And we just, we just have to recognize that there's some people in the office and there's other people in the office with them, they'll be uncomfortable lying down. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I just never know with this environment, right? Exactly. So people, I really, 
And I, I do trust, you know, you have to trust that you're going to, I have to trust that you're going to take care of yourselves in the best way you can. So like John has been said, if you need to get up and walk around or do something, please do. Um, Cause we're not in the same room. So I can't fully assess. Um, but okay. So let's, let's begin. Let me start my timer. And so just um, lying down, if you're lying down or sitting, and just as we started the other practice, just feeling yourself in this body, feeling the contact of the body with the chair sitting on, contact of the body with the floor, feeling a sense of gravity, soft pulling, and connecting Again, to the breath moving in and out. And allowing yourself this time to just rest in awareness. No need to go anywhere. No need to do anything or solve anything or change anything. So your breath, this breath, this body. And we'll start with the, the feet. We'll go with both feet. And just starting with the tips of the, uh, not the toes of the feet. And so bringing your awareness to the toes of the feet, the tops of the feet, the soles of the feet. And just noticing if there's any sensation. And sensation can be pleasant or unpleasant or neutral. There might be warmth, coolness, tightness, maybe contact with a, a sock or carpet. So awareness of the feet and the ankles. Noticing any sensations. And then moving up the legs to the calves. Awareness of the skin of the calves, the bone, the muscles. Maybe the contact of the calves with the floor. And to the knees. So awareness of sensations in the calves and the knees. These, the joint of the knee, the kneecaps that bend, help us take steps, move through the world. Sensations. And then shifting our awareness to our thighs, the muscles of the thighs, the long femur bone from the knees up to the hip sockets, the bottom, the sides, the inside of the thighs, just awareness of that thigh. Any sensations? And sometimes as we go through the body scan, just like if we're doing a mindful breathing practice, our mind may wander and go off to anywhere, a previous activity or a thought from the past or future or another part of the body. It's so natural. So just notice. And whenever you come back to hearing my voice, 
wherever we are in the body, which is right now on the thighs, you can just bring your awareness back to your thighs or back to whatever body part we're on. And we'll shift the awareness now to the pelvic girdle, to the hip bones, the hip sockets, the bone, the external, the bones of the hip, of the hips, pelvic girdle, the internal parts of the pelvis, place of reproduction, of elimination. Awareness of the pelvic girdle. And sometimes Certain parts of the body, we might have feelings that come up or emotions or thoughts that we tell ourselves about that part. And just being aware of that too and greeting it all as much as possible with, with love, with compassion, with allowing what's there to be there in this one body that we have. And now from the pelvic girdle, shifting to the back of the body, to the lower part of the back, the coccyx, the sacrum. Sometimes there's some tension there. In fact, for people who are on the floor, if the lower back feels sensitive, you can bend your knees and put your feet on the floor and that can soften the back a little bit. But awareness of the lower back, the muscles around the lower back, spine, and moving up to the mid back, muscles on either side of the spine, to the upper back, shoulder blades, again, perhaps noticing gravity, gently, gently doing what gravity does to the body. And awareness of the whole back, this back that holds up our torso, that allows us to bend and twist, that holds the spine. The nervous system running through the vertebrae from the lower part of the spine up to our brainstem. And then maybe with an exhalation, letting go of the back, softening as we move back to the front of the body, to the belly, the abdomen, the stomach. And perhaps you'll notice a rising and falling of the belly as you breathe. Digestion happens in the belly, our 25 plus feet of intestines moving through the belly, helping us move 
nutrients and waste through the body. Giving your belly, seeing if you can just rest with allowing what's there to be there. <clears throat> Whatever feelings come up. And then we'll shift up to the chest and to the skin of the chest, the breasts the bones of the chest, the sternum, the rib cage, housing and protecting the lungs, and perhaps noticing the lungs or the chest expanding and contracting. As we just breathe naturally. And the heart, the heart beating in the chest, taking blood and oxygen to all parts of the body. Awareness of the heart and the lungs. And let's shift the awareness now from the chest and the lungs to our hands. So both hands, whether they're resting to your, at your sides or wherever they are, just bringing awareness to the fingers, the thumbs, maybe noticing tingling, the fingertips, more nerve ending, endings than most anywhere in the body. So the palms of the hands, the back of the hands, the fingers and the wrists, noticing sensations. And moving up the arms to the lower part of the arms. Our forearms. The elbows, the joints of the elbows, the inner part, the pointed part of the elbow. Again, these arms and hands help us grasp, hold, let go express and now to the upper arms the skin of the upper arms the muscles the bone from the elbow up to the shoulder shoulders and awareness of the shoulders. Also a place sometimes we can hold tension. So sometimes when we just notice that there's tension or pain or tightness in allowing ourselves to be aware of it, it can soften. Not always. Sometimes we can notice the rhythm of that sensation in the body a tightness, then maybe there's a little softness and maybe a tightness. So just becoming a little more familiar with those sensations in the shoulders.
And then in the neck, awareness of the neck, the throat, the vocal cords, and perhaps noticing air moving through the throat from the nose to the lungs and back, bringing in oxygen, expelling carbon dioxide. And then bringing your awareness up to your face. So starting with the chin, awareness of the chin and the jaw, many bones in the jaw. To the mouth, the lips of the mouth, <clears throat> the gums inside the mouth, the teeth the upper part of the mouth, the tongue, this mouth that brings us nutrition, helps us express, begins the digestion of our body. And then shifting to our nose and perhaps there too, noticing air moving in and out of the nostrils place where we can breathe and smell. Sometimes the nose is clogged up, in which case you need to breathe through the mouth more. Noticing the flow. And then we'll move to the eyes, the eyeballs, and the eye sockets, these eyes that help bring in the world to us in colors and shapes, and the eyelids, eyelashes, eyebrows, awareness of the forehead, another place where sometimes we can hold tension or express tension maybe sensing gravity on the forehead. And we'll shift now to the ears, the external parts of the ears, the ear lobes, the internal part where sound waves enter the ears, creating meaning in our brain. and shifting inside the head to the skull that protects the brain. And to the brain, awareness of the brain, this three pound organ. Billions of neurons and cells. synapses, trillions. And then we will come back to the external part of our head, to the hair on our head or air on our head, whatever we notice on the external part of our head. And coming back down through the neck, through the shoulders and the arms and the hands, the chest, the belly, the pelvic girdle, the upper part of the back, mid back, lower back, buttocks, down to the thighs, awareness of the knees, the calves, to the bottoms of the feet and the toes. and sensing breath moving through this whole body from the toes to the top of the head. 
Breath in and breath out. And also in our last moments, being aware of this body connected, connected and whole. Appreciation for this body as it is in whatever stage or age we're in. May we connect to this body with deep appreciation and care. And then perhaps sensing as we come back to the breath in and out, you might sense the whole body breathing, expanding on an inhalation slightly, contracting on an exhalation slightly. So this body connected and whole. And in a moment, you'll hear the bell and I wanna invite you to uh, give yourself some appreciation, some gratitude for doing this practice, for trying it out if it was the first time. And for connecting to the body as it is, connecting, creating more intimacy. So you can start to uh, wiggle your toes and fingers and wrists and I'll ring the bell as you slowly, slowly move the body. And if you're on the floor, gently, really take your time rolling to your side and rest there for a moment. <clears throat> and sitting up and <clears throat> as you're ready, no rush, coming back to your chair if you were on the floor. And those who were seated or even on the floor, if you need to take a stretch, you can take a stretch. Yeah, amazing body. <clears throat> Great, people are popping back. All right, so, um, so that was 22 minutes. Um, and uh, the body scan with MBSR is usually about 45 minutes, 40 to 45, and it is a lot, it is a lot. Um, and then I've done them in like five to 10 minutes. So I think what I'll do on the website is what I have up there is a 40 minute one. I have a shorter one, which I'll post. So people can, you know, if you're interested, you can go back and do, you know, and I can't do 40 minutes. What are you, what are you asking me to do? <laughs> so there's shorter ones where you can still, you know, really touch in. So I think it's important to do a little debrief um, about how, you, how that experience was for you. If you want to share, no need. If I, I hope these few people here didn't fall asleep because that can happen in the body scan. <laughs> um, <clears throat> definitely can happen. I knew if I lay down, I would be out. I just knew it. So mm -hmm. sit up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So anybody have, uh, what, what did you notice about doing that practice and or do you have any questions? What did you notice for yourself? I feel better than I did, definitely. Um, I also feel like that sort of brought up a lot of um, emotions then once we you know hang up and I go away then I can sort of like dig into those and see if I can process them because it, it just I know that they get dropped in the body and I I just I've always been um, into you know fitness and all these mind-body connection I've been into that my whole life but I am um, 
in October 2017, my husband uh, took a trip to Egypt, like a soul journey. And I was there with my two-year-old at the time, you know, kind of being mom, dad, and doing everything for something like, I don't know, 16 days or something. Mm -hmm. And I've known since then that I've had a really hard time being in my body. I mean, since that time, like I still, it's, I'm still resistant after all this time. It's the weirdest thing. So this is just... Um, yet one more chance I have to like look at that and try to move through it. So thank you. That was great. And clearly I need to do this more. You're welcome. Yeah. Well, the link will be on the website so you can try it out in shorter doses and, you know, and see how you can stay with those places that feel resistant and yeah, get more familiar. Is, is the link, is it a written thing or is it an audio thing? It's audio audio yeah it's my voice so it's already up there on the website um but i'll put a shorter one up there hopefully okay, too. yeah i mean and there's audio not not to, not to take away from your voice but everyone like you know everyone is soothed by different voices and and i am and i'm sure everyone knows this already and has knows about it but there's uh, insight timer it's free and there are if you go to insight timer and look up body scan there are thousands of body scans, two minutes, one minute, 40 minutes, hour and a half, you can all kinds of things. I, it's just a, it's a great free tool people have access yeah. to. Perfect, yeah, that it's, it's really true because some people, voices are very important, right? And some, you can be really turned off by a voice or really, you know, irritated by a voice. So um, yeah, so look out there and see which one, you know, suits you. Any other? Um, this is, this is the tool I've used with my kids when they couldn't sleep is you have them, you know, they're laying down in bed and you have them just start at their toes and just notice their toes and work their way up their body. And, and you notice, notice how the bed supports your legs and notice how you kind of sink in, but there's gravity, it's pulling you down, but the bread pushes you, bed pushes you up and this whole body scan thing. And it's the only thing that has consistently worked uh, when they, you know, they have a nightmare, they have something they can't go to sleep. You sit down, you just kind of walk through that whole thing with them, and in ten minutes, they're just out. Oh, wow, wow, wonderful to hear that. Great tool. <laughs> it's a wonderful thing, you know. I teach too for my classes, and when I wake up in the middle of the night, I go into that a lot. Yeah, if I can't yeah. sleep, I do it. Yeah. Yeah, to just connect to the body, even just for a few minutes, and then I might be out. Yep. Yeah. Anybody else? How was that experience? Um, so I've done this uh, breath work and body work before a lot as a form of therapy. Um, makes me realize I have to go back to do that again, because for me, the experience was I've just felt pain traveling throughout my entire body and realized that I have my body has been in distress for probably the past like two and a half weeks and you know yeah and it's just it lets you, your body lets you know that you need help and like yeah yeah what a wonderful thing to realize because it's true we, we kind of keep going it's like, eh, eh, I don't, I don't want to listen to that. Or we, you know, we distract ourselves. And when we stop to connect, it's like, oh, that's what's going on. And we know that the more we, we um, you know, have these just uh, aversion, what, resists persi what we resist persists, you know. And if we keep trying to push it down, it's not going away. It just could create something more damaging. So we really do. It's, 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 it's a form of self-love to stop and listen and then take care because you know you're not alone sarah i you know i think we're all running 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 and then we stop and we're like ah <laughs> we notice things we didn't notice yeah that's the beauty of this practice anybody else yes so i've uh, i've done this before uh, a handful of times over the years um, through yoga and or meditation type retreats. And I find that I do fall asleep uh, 
consistently, which I find really odd because I have sleep apnea and I have a very hard time falling asleep outside of this kind of environment. Hmm. Like listening to your voice, there was something about it that allowed me to get relaxed and peaceful. And, um, and I don't have a lot of that. My, my world's got a lot going on, like I think a lot of other people. Mm-hmm. So, so thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. And, you know, this kind of is what we're doing here, right? It's the classic glacier. You can see the glaciers are melting. That's a very sad picture, actually. Um, but, you know, all this is happening underneath the surface, our physical sensations, our thoughts, our emotions. It's all going on. But often we're not aware of it, but it expresses itself in how we behave and what we say and what we do. So, the more we can start connecting to that and the brain, I, you know, we have to remember about 90 to 95% of what the brain responds to is non-conscious. So it's responding to all this and we are responding to all this. So, um, yeah, so the connection is just so critical. Um, so, I want to go back to, just so you can see, if anybody came in late, to the website that is, oops, oh gosh, not my photos. Okay. <laughs> um, this is your website and the link, I will send you, can you guys send out the link yeah. when I, I'll send it to you? We yeah. can actually put actually, it. If you yeah. go to Pop Stress Now, just go to here, Solution Six Week Curriculum. It's there for you. And it says mindful stress management, but pop stress now gets you here. And then you can see down here again, just to remind you if somebody came in late, is week two. And there's the body scan. So this I think is a 40 minute or I'm not sure. Um, 33. Pretty good, but I think I have for one that I'll also put up there. And then this is a stress load assessment tool that just kind of, you know, if you want to do it's a psychology assessment, it's used, it's like one of the most common ones. It's very short, 10 items. If you want to do that and just get a sense of, of where you are, um, that's an option. And then last week, if you want to go back to things that we did the first and last week, I keep saying that, we know what I'm talking about. Go back to the stress management toolbox which are some things we talked about um, in May 1st when I had the first session and just kind of a reference guide of, you know, the pop stress now, which you've done, but also what are some things you can do to interrupt the stress response as you go through the day? And maybe you can pick one and do it for a week just to, you know, remind yourself. I, um, I put it in the chat box, the link. Oh, good. Thank you. Perfect. And, um, yeah, so that, that is what I have to offer there today. Terry, do you know and the week? next time we meet will be around communication. Yeah. Terry, do you know the Rumi poem, the um, guest house? Yeah. Do you I do? have it? Do you want yeah. me to read it? I, I have it too. I mean, it's it, every time I uh, do. I, and I don't remember if I actually brought the same poem up last time, which would be just like me to do. Um, but, <laughs> but I just, I love the poem. It is so important for this kind of stuff. It's just like the world is what the world is. We just have to accept it. If you have it, that'd be great. Yeah, I usually have it. There it is. All right, good, Jonathan, thanks. Okay, we'll close on this. Uh, one quick oh. question, Terry. Yeah. Is there a particular time of day, if somebody was gonna really try and put their foot down and incorporate this, you know, in the morning, uh, midday, or like in the evening, is there any science behind the time of day? What's it's such, it's such a good question and such a common question. And I really, what it turns out is what is a time that works for you and your lifestyle? And um, so it's the science doesn't point to if you do it in the morning, it's better than if you do it at night. However, if we do it in the morning, then it's done. So a lot of people they're like, I'll do it tonight. Well, tonight comes and then it just like, uh, uh, that's not what I'm going to do. So sometimes just to kind of make sure we get it in, people get up a little earlier and do it in the morning because you're more alert than too, less likely to fall asleep. 
So I recommend the morning, but some people, you know, with the kids and everything, they, they don't want to get up earlier and, you know, got a lot to do. So find a time that like, that is my precious time. Okay. And that's yeah. when I can commit. It, is, it sets the tone, right? For the rest of the day. That too, right. If you do it in the morning. It's, it's also, and you know, this is something I, I learned at the, at the Institute of Buddhist Studies was if you really want to treat this practice with respect, you find the time, you also find a location, you find a, you know, a process, the things that go before it and things that come after it. And that's all part of the same habit you do every day. And it just helps, it helps both uh, set the tone for meditation. It also contextualizes meditation in your life and it enables you to maintain the habit. And it's, this is not, you don't want this to be something like a unicycle where you try it, you can't figure it out, you put it in the closet, right? You want this to be something you do and you do it, you commit to it every day and it's literally, it's a forever thing. Uh, and, and, it, and it, so you don't commit half an hour, you don't commit 20, you commit three minutes your first time and then you build it from there and you just do really simple practice. Body scan is one of the simplest you know, the, the, the pop that she gave us last time, that's, that's like a perfect breath meditation, perfect intro. Uh, and the body scans a little bit more advanced, but it's also just a really easy thing because we all have a body, right? It's such a, such great tools, such great tools. And I'll, I will just yeah, reiterate three minutes is great. If that's what you've got, even one minute, if it's like, you know, but, but committing to it daily is so important, whether you want to do it or not. That, like this okay, the guest week, house. Oh, th somebody, let me warn yeah. you. So this last week, I meditate every single day. And this last, last week has been, my meditations have been awful. Like my brain won't shut off. I can't, I can't even track it. There's no bringing my mind back. I just, so I, I give up three minutes in. I'm like, I, I sat. That's what I had to do. My commitment is to sit. I, my commitment is not for 30 minutes. It's to sit. And I sat and I get up and walk away. I don't beat myself up. Tomorrow I come back and I sit and try again. That's mm -hmm. the... If it doesn't work, step away, come back. Perfect. Perfect. And sometimes if you have that special place in your house, that's your sitting place, and you don't even have any time, or, or you know, sometimes just looking at it or thinking about it gives you, once you've created that space as your space, then it can be like, ah, oh, it just gives you a little sense of pause in the middle of the day when you think about that. But I wouldn't start that in the beginning because you've got to create the practice and the commitment, even if it's a minute. It's okay. Okay, the guest house by Rumi. For all these feelings that you brought in in the beginning and whatever arose during the body scan and whatever's there now. Rumi, this being human is a guest house. Every morning, a new arrival, a joy, a depression, a meanness, some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all, even if they're a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house empty of its furniture. Still, treat each guest honorably. He may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice, Meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whoever comes because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. The guest house. And we. Thanks, Terry. There's the bell. <laughs> You're so Thank welcome. You, Thank you. Next date, you'll let everybody know, probably two weeks. Mm -hmm. Yep, that one's, uh, that one's on the calendar, I believe. And we'll, okay. we'll be inviting everybody here and other people as well. Great. All right, and I welcome you to practice. Go to the website and uh, do, it, do what you can do. And I wish you all well in on these really challenging times. Thanks, Terry. Have a good weekend. Thank you so much, yeah. Happy so well, everybody.